when I think about the future, I, I cannot think about the past. I think about myself, a little black girl in the Bronx, and my experience and my journey to get to be standing right here right now, and all the pedigree and social capital that I acquired, and how damaged I am now, and how every single day I pick up pieces of myself. So when I think about the future of SEL, and I think about schooling and education in general, I have to ask this question. How can we practice and implement SEL to ensure that it doesn't cause harm? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important for us to know that most of the time where we do our education or schooling initiatives, it has happened within a broken system of education with a history of exclusion and inequity. Our schooling system is in equity by design. So when we think about what we implement and what we do, we have to think about the larger system and the larger context to ensure that we're not perpetuating the damage and the harm that is done to too many students like me. Too many students who look like me. And so I can't help asking the second question. What is our why? What is our why? And so some of us who've been here in these past two days have been thinking about, why are we doing this work? When I was at my pre-session, school climate came up, academic achievement came up. We know what the research tells us. But in my travels and the work that I've done with schools and districts throughout the nation, I have seen that that why changes depending on the students. So that when we're speaking about black and brown students, that SEL is about remediation. It is about saving black and brown children from themselves. It is about co compliance and following rules. But when I speak to other districts with privileged kids, it's about college and career readiness. It's about enhancement. So when we think about this work, and if our why is different depending on who we're speaking about, we have to ask ourselves, how are we complicit in injustice? How are we complicit in the harm and the damage that happens to our young people? Bettina Love talks about, she's from the University of Georgia, some of y'all know her. She talks about the spirit murdering of our young people. We have to ensure that this work that we do is not spirit murdering our children. But I will add too, that many of the teachers and educators in the room are also, have also been spirit murdered. Every single day, like I said, I am picking myself up. It is important for us to know too, good intentions don't equal good outcomes. Just because you mean well does not mean that the outcome is gonna be good. I can't tell you how often when I was growing up, going to boarding school in Connecticut, and how often people came to me and said, oh, Dina, you're so articulate. And I would say, and I would, and, and, and that was, the intention was good. But the way I received it was as if they didn't believe that I could be. Or how often people think my hair is awesome. Thank you all, I know. <laughs> and how often folks would, you know, put their hand in my hair. And how often I felt dehumanized or like a spectacle. Don't touch my hair. Good intentions don't e equal good outcomes. And my second point is that anything can be used as a weapon. I sleep with a bat near my bed because growing up I felt very unsafe when it got dark. A bat is for baseball, but I can use it as a weapon. So we have to be very careful and really critical about how we think about the work that we do and ensure that we're, we have a broken system. And if we don't think widely and strategically and deliberately about this system that is broken, anything can be used as a weapon. So this work of equity, of achieving equity, requires courage and discomfort. I know that some of the things I said today may make people feel a little uncomfortable. But it's through that discomfort that we grow. It is through that discomfort that we try to do better and be better. And I'll also just, since I'm speaking from the heart, every single day when I walk into this world, I feel uncomfortable. 
Because when I walk into the room, the first assumption that people have about me is not a positive one. So every single day I feel uncomfortable. How do we create and change the system so that the two gentlemen who spoke up here earlier today have different options? That is our work. And it's hard. And it takes courage, and it's going to be uncomfortable. How many of you are about that life? I want to hear from you. How many of you are about that life? So in closing, I would say for this work to happen, we have to apply an equity lens. Actually, you know what? We just have to start seeing what it is. We don't like to say what it is, because we don't like to talk about race in this country. We cannot heal our wounds if we don't tend to them. So we need to apply an equity and an anti-racist lens. So I leave you with one question, which is, how can we leverage SEL to create the social change that we need? That is not a question for you to, not just to ponder, but this is an action plan for you. What is your action plan to ensure that we leverage SEL to create the social change we so desperately need?